Zealand and went to the university there. And I was greatly influenced by a professor called Arnold Lilly, who was a structural geologist who had come from Europe in the late 30s and worked for the Geological Survey. Arnold was a wonderful man. Uh, he wasn't mathematical, but he loved rock structure and it, it came across. I should say that he mapped the highest parts of the Southern Alps and uh, he had a pretty good field assistant by the name of Ed Hillary, which he acknowledges in his papers, saying without whose help access would have been difficult, if not impossible, <laughs> to the high Southern Alps. Mm -hmm. And so he imbued this love of mountains. I'm not a mountaineer, but I do like remote and wild places. And I had a few hobbies while at the university, and one of them was caving in limestone caves south of Auckland. And another was wandering off to the Coromandel Peninsula, the Hauraki Goldfield, where probably foolishly we used to crawl in and out of the hundreds of old mines and the hillsides and the bush. And you start seeing some pretty interesting things in mines. So that was something I thought about a lot. What did I think my destiny would be? I thought if I was lucky, I would end up as an exploration geologist in Australia. And I even had a summer job in the Flinders Ranges one year, uh, chasing uranium around Mount Painter area. And that was educational. I can remember my first day on a drill rig, because in Auckland we didn't really see plutonic rocks on field trips. And up came these pink and white and grey chips and the old Canadian driller. Sure looks like tombstone to me, boy, he said. So, Ran up. <laughs> Carry on. So you get education in a range of ways, but move, moving countries is painful, but it's very good. I've done it three major steps in my life, and each one has changed the way I think about things. Now, I went to London as a grad student, principally because of Arnold Lilly, because he saw me the week before the exams and said, you haven't put in for any scholarships. And I said, well, I'm going to take a dive next week, Prof. And he said, I know. But come to my office, sign this, this, and this. And one of those pieces of paper got me to London on something called an 1851 scholarship. That whole area is the product of the 1851 Crystal Palace exhibition in Hyde Park, which made a profit, unlike mo most modern expos. And they set up a commission to spend the money. And they built there museums and universities, Royal College of Organists, Royal School of Mines, the British Empire was a mining empire, um, City and Guilds Engineering College, Royal College of Science, those three things, mines, engineering and science, grouped together to become Imperial College. So it was a British technical establishment. I didn't know what I wanted to do except that I read this book by a professor called John Ramsey, who was a very famous structural geologist, and I couldn't understand the book, so I thought that's a good place to start. And he wouldn't let me start a PhD straight away, because he said, look, we run this one-year MSc structural course, which will get you up to speed and to the edge of knowledge. And that was a first impression that being a grad student, you need to be at the edge of what is known. And I've heard the very famous uh, plate tectonists say, if you're not at the edge, you're not doing science. Uh, so it's an important thing to know what the limits of knowledge are and where you can add a bit.